Hello and welcome back to the Sports Level Football Show. It is five to ten on Wednesday night. Uh, I have had the longest day of my life almost. Um, been up from six o'clock and I'm only just literally in through the door. Uh, I'm joined this week by Brenton Hagen making his debut. Say hello, Brenton. Hello, good to be here. Yeah, uh, Brenton, tell everyone who you support. I am a proud supporter of Chelsea Football Club. Brenton supports Chelsea, so uh, I suppose we'll just talk a little bit and and get let people know about you supporting Chelsea. This season, obviously last season was quite good. It was quite good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's won the league. This season started a bit mad with the cost of whole fiasco and everything going on. Um, happy enough with the way things are going now? or? Well, as we speak, look, Chelsea have just uh, qualified for their through the group stage of the Champions League. So happy with that. That's ticked off with Atletico still to come to Stamford Bridge. So depending on... I, I don't know actually how the Roma Atletico game finished. 2 0 to Atletico. Okay. It's good for Chelsea actually. Well, it means now that Chelsea, Chelsea have, to have to win now to top of the group because Roma play. Uh, Carabag. Carabag, yeah. Carabag. What did Carabag do against Atletico? Drew? They drew with one of those teams, yeah. yeah I think I, they drew both of them actually, haven't they? Yeah, maybe? I think they've drawn with both of them. I think Chelsea might only need to draw with Atletico, do they? Well, uh, yeah, if Roma don't win. Uh, yeah. Depending on what it is. Anyway, they're three, which is the most important thing. Um, all the English teams actually doing very well in the Champions League. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, last, last night. Apart, I mean. <coughs> Liverpool, Liverpool won 3 0. I don't know what happened after that. In the second half, yeah, they lost 3 0. Well, I haven't seen that, so. Um, but Liverpool said, where are I? Top of the group. Beat, beat That's Spartan what I mean, Moscow, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. City through, United. They're basically through. They need a point in the last they, game. They need they? to get beat by three goals, and Basel need to win by three goals for them not to go through. More or less. Yeah. yeah. This is not going to happen. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So United through, Chelsea through, Spurs through, top of the group. Spurs are brilliant. The whole way through, like. Yeah. Um. So that's something about them doing well. Um. Chelsea, yeah, like, obviously, City. At this stage last season, like Chelsea weren't, you know running away with it or anything they weren't you know they were still they were roughly flying about high f- yeah before fifth was a fifth weren't they yeah. and, and they're third at the minute you know so all this talk about like you know chelsea they have a, a great season and they have a, a terrible season i think conte there was there was threat of that happening again definitely was threat of it happening again chelsea is the sort of club you just get used to it like that Things go mad, like behind the scenes, yeah. and then eventually it affects it on the pitch. Like that second season, Mourinho. Obviously, the first season was unreal, and it was return of Mourinho, and everybody was loving it. But it it blows up so quickly. One because of Jose Mourinho, and two because that tends to happen at Chelsea. But I think it it can't uh, steady it. He steadies it, like, and he brings in that organization that you would expect Conte to bring in mm-hmm. like Italy I think are probably crying out for him to come back yeah um which I'm kind of worried about because he didn't say no like yes. you know he bit, when he was asked the question he didn't say I'm not going like I think Milan as well I've been sniffing around him too haven't I yeah well I'm not you know I'm not surprised yeah um what was it, it you know it was his 50th um Premier League game there 138 <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, he's done that all you need to know. Yeah. And the other thing is, as Pilicueta has played every minute of the Premier League. He's a big League, fan of Dave, isn't he? Well, you know, what was he? Eleven million? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. In, in today's market, like that, it shows you how good he is. And Conte obviously loves him. He's a workhorse. He can play anywhere. Um, but what I was saying about um, Conte under Mourinho, I think the stuff that happened has happened so far this season. Like that thing uh, with David Luiz. Yes. Um cost of leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Hazard being injured, Kante being injured, you know Fabregas being a bit a bit Fabregas, you yeah. know yeah, he's a fantastic no player, but yeah, Salam Maris the United, all this stuff, Amanalo leaving, like, you know, there's so much of it. If it happened under Mourinho, you know, chaos, I think. Yeah, yeah. Conte, it's different, like it really is, and he's sitting third in the league. You know, he's yes, City. You know, are what are your points ahead mm-hmm. of Chelsea? Chelsea are a point behind United. Do you know what I mean? They beat United, and going in 
you know, on the back of playing to play Liverpool on the back of three wins in a row the in the Roman Premier League and they've turned it around. Yeah, they haven't conceded in, yeah. in three games in the Premier League. Which they were conceding before, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they really were. What First, did what did change at the back? <sighs> Did he make a change that I told you off air one day to make a change? Did he make that change? Did he get David Louise out of the road? Some bragging, ra- it's some bragging yeah. rights. Bragging. Christensen, you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. You said, actually, I remember you said in, in the car and we were on the way back from somewhere, I can't remember, but. St. Clair Rose. Yeah, exactly. Um, you said, if it was me, I would take David Louise out. It was before a game. It's it was before, before the United, United game. game. Yeah. Exactly. You said, um, I'll take David Louise out, why not give Christensen a run? Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what he did. And since then, Christensen's played, I know it's been, what, two or three games, but he was brilliant in that game. Christensen he was very, was, very good against Lukaku. Yeah. in that game. And the whole thing about Lukaku, you know, not playing in big games, you know, that's, that's a different issue. But yeah. Christensen did all he could, and he was fantastic. Um and he played David Luiz in the Champions League tonight. Even that sort of thing, you know, he gave David Luiz 90 minutes. And David Luiz is a big character, like. So to keep him, it's sort of like keeping him taking over, like, because as I heard someone say recently, I read something, the whole thing about Chelsea not playing Champions League last year, that's a whole, you know, it's a whole new thing for this squad. So they're going to need to rotate. Yeah, players are going to need to stay fresh. And even though he played William against Carabag, he played Pedro and he played Hazard, he didn't start Morata, he brought him on 65 minutes. Hazard came off, so he's going to be fresh for Liverpool. Good. Okay. The you know, that's the him. idea, obviously. Like, yeah. Whereas um, Liverpool had a top second half. I know you don't <laughs> want to talk about it, but... I, ha- I still did, haven't like, seen it, so... Because um, I'm writing, obviously, my column for this week, and I'm just refusing to watch the second half of that match. Just before we talk about that match, and we'll talk about uh, the weekend's Premier League results, because thankfully, club football is back. Exactly. We don't need to talk about what happened with World Cup qualifiers. That's that just that didn't happen either. Um, Alvaro Morata, happy with him? I love him. Like. <laughs> Obviously, I do. do you know, he, he's he's the Torres you wanted. Exactly. I think. Exactly, and he's the Torres we had, and then obviously Fernando got his some injuries, and he went to yourselves, and he just couldn't, whatever. But and he's still good at Chelsea. Like, yeah, like, and I love Torres. Like, and I think yeah. nobody doesn't like him. Like, no, you know, Torres is fantastic. Apart from the Manu Vidic. Yeah, well, he plays for United, so that's just not kind of. <laughs> um, yeah, Morata. I mean, what is it? You know, twelve. He's been involved in 12 goals in his first 11 games. Yeah. And that's a club record. That tells you all you need to know, really. Like, there was questions about Morata. One being his comparison with Lukaku. The fact that he was cheaper. Um, the fact that it was supposed to be Lukaku coming back to Chelsea. That's originally what they wanted. Now, I, like, everyone will tell you that I spoke to about this. I never wanted no, Lukaku. I no, I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Murata, every time I saw him, you know, make appearances for Real Madrid, which is all he did, was make appearances. He never seemed to start. Never get seen to get a run through then. He never seemed to get his proper chance. And any time I saw him, I didn't really see him a lot for Spain because I don't know if he, you know, if he mm. made that many appearances for them either. Like only in the Euros, really, was his sort of breakout time with Spain, I think. Yeah, and I suppose Torres was there, and then yeah. they didn't play at number nine. After that, yeah. for a while, just when they were running the world and stuff, um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, every time I saw him, I was impressed with him. Like, and he appears like he can do it in the big games, which is a big, massive thing. See, see when you saw him run it, and I've had this before. Players, true Bill. Have you? Ever, I don't know if you've ever had it as well. Like, and I'll ask Jake and whoever else comes on this, in even other football fans. If you watch a player who's playing for another team, I watched Suarez play in the two thousand ten World Cup. Right for Uruguay, and I was like, I want to sign him. I love, I lo- I really like this player. I want to sign him. Did you have you had that? Like obviously, like Messi and Ronaldo don't count, and Neymar and those big stars. But the yeah. players that are underneath that radar, have you seen them before? We've gone. Uh, yes, I'd like him. At was was Morata like that? Were you? You're like I'd really like to see him in a, in a blue shirt at Stamford Bridge, or was it never? If I'm honest, no, no, I didn't. That wasn't my thought. I admired him big time. Yeah. Um, but because Chelsea. Had that that already with, with Costa with Drogba first, then Costa, yeah. you know, and 
the other thing is about the backup striker. You know, if Morata gets injured, which he he tends to get niggles and, and things like that, Conte does not trust Batshuayi. He doesn't <laughs> like. I love the Batman. Like yeah. he's a hero, but he's he's no Morata and. He hasn't proved himself yet, yeah. especially in big games. You know, against the smaller teams, you can get away with playing him. Carabao Cup, he plays him and he scores goals. But he, he scored that goal against Atletico, and I thought he was maybe going to mm. kick on. But unfortunately for him, Morata decided that he was going to start doing bits. Yeah. And then Hazard and Morata, they, they've almost clicked instantly, haven't they? They have clicked. And Azpilicueta and Morata have clicked as well. Yes. And Fabregas. Fabregas <laughs> and Morata have clicked. But Fabregas clicks with anyone you know what I mean that I'm, and I know it was Carabag but when I was watching that match earlier he plays that ball he's probably played so many times that he's, it's just perfection now Fabregas and Pedro see if Fabregas is given time you know there's no one better in that position which is another issue because I don't know what he's like in the big game see especially Liverpool the way they press high mm-hmm. I don't know if Mar- if Fabregas is gonna have an impact. S- have an impact or shoot that game because if you stifle out Fabregas, you know Chelsea need to work hard to to work around that and do something different. Um, what did you make of Saturday's game? <clears throat> West Brom. Um, it's the, hard. We, West Brom looked like the new the managers when they get sacked at times, didn't they? But it is. Was, it's hard. That, which goal was it? It was Hazard's goal was a lovely flick. Yeah. Is it Aspel Aquila plays the ball first? It's Fabregas. It's Fabregas yeah. plays it. Lovely surprise, surprise. Run, run ball. Murata flicks it on and Fabregas runs on. Yeah. And they're doing that all the time now. You know. Yeah. The Atletico game was where they, I think that was probably Hazard's first start back or something like that. And you just sort of, back from injury, you're yeah. like, oh, hang on. These two have clicked. Yeah. He, and what I like as well about that partnership is they move differently to the way Costa did. I, I'm not saying Costa was brilliant, the way he moved, but he always moved forward. He always moved off the back of the defender. Murata's touch is so good. Yeah. When he comes in to feet, Azar can spin him behind, and you saw that with that goal you are talking about. Like, he comes in to feet, and Azar can spin him behind the space that Murata's created. He runs into him, and he's going to be pacey enough to obviously get there and finish. Um, which I think is is sort of a key to him moving into you know that bracket to talk about behind Messi and Ronaldo mm-hmm. that world class where Suarez and stuff is the guy Neymar and the likes um, probably would keep Zlatan there even though he has a bionic knee yeah and he's on drugs well clearly he is Jason <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what I mean adding yeah, goals yeah, yeah, yeah. that way um, I think that's that's maybe key to him getting in there, but doing it consistently. Mm. As it's in a, he's in a great spell of form at the minute, which is great news for you. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good game for once. What way do you think Liverpool, that's what I was going to ask you, what way do you think they'll set um, it up? The only way a club knows how to set it up. Yeah. Just go out and go after it. What about personnel? Um, it probably will go similar to, to what he went with uh, against Southampton, I'd like to see Joe Gomez start at centre half. Um, yeah, he's been playing on the right. He's been playing on the right, and I think you know what I'd like. I'd like to see Trent Alexander Arnold start. That was a mouthful there for me to say. Trent to start at right back. Like Joe Gomez start at centre half. I don't know who you put him with if Malib's not fit. Um, that's an issue, isn't it? That is an issue because those two, Clavin and Lavin, <laughs> Clavin and Lavin have had. Um, Two good games, and then supposedly people tell me last night Liverpool drew three. Oh, I still don't believe it. But had a shock <laughs> in the center ha- second half, and then Moreno had a poor second half as well. He, he wants to go back to Sevilla, and he's been really good. And um, but uh, it's just that Sevilla seems to just knacker him. Um, so I don't know. Uh, the back four is obviously a massive worry, but I think I think Emery Chan <laughs> should come back in. Uh, it's telling that he's not coming in when he that whole contract situation's up. And um, we're getting into what's four weeks to the win- window opens, and I think Liverpool could be about to try and cash in on them in January, okay, and send them off away from the Premier League, uh, which is a shame because I really like Emery Chan. I like Chan. I think he's um, a good player. I do like him, and I think he adds something in midfield, and and I would like to have seen him and Navi Keita next some next year, 
in midfield together with if Coutinho's still there, he's still there. If not, it's Alan Milano who can't wait to come to come back. Hopefully, sure, I forgot about Milano yeah, as well. Um, Oxley Chamberlain's there. I know Jake isn't a big fan, but I like him. But yeah, but we have the best player in the world in Mo Salah. So <laughs> apparently, yeah. Yeah, um, we Mo. Let's talk about we Mo. Let's talk about him. Because Frank Lampard was interesting on him last night. Really, really good, nice about him. Said he was a quiet kid. He came in. You could see there was talent there, but he just came in the Chelsea at the wrong time. He was a kid. Like, yeah, that's what it was. And he had so there's no you you, you have the feeling with Mo as well. There's no ill feeling towards anyone. No, no, <laughs> and, he, nothing. He loves the world. He like. just loves it. Yeah, um, and the Mo, Mo Salah, Firmino, and Mane up against Chelsea and Murad and Hazard and Fabra. This it could be a cracking game. Yeah, I hope it is. Yeah, so do I. I, I, I'm I'm a bit worried because of obviously what people are telling me about what happened last night um, but Anfield at half five on a Saturday seems to be a good thing mm. uh, I don't want to jinx it so I'm touching away but I think we've only conceded one goal in, home, in the league at home this year I couldn't believe that and that's Burnley yeah yeah. our goal difference is knackered in the league because Man City and Spurs put nine goals past us yeah I, I was looking at that earlier United, I know United had conceded one at home and that was only last week wasn't it uh, yeah it must have been yeah, yeah. Um and Liverpool have only conceded one at home as well. Yeah, he's turned um he's turned Anfield into a fortress again. Uh, Burnley was obviously the the blip. Yeah. Um, but I mean before last. I know about game, that. Yes, before last night's game, um, we we I was beat by Spurs and then we went. I think it was three 0 three 0 three one or something or four one or something mad. Um, and we only conceded one goal in, in three games and obviously last night as has happened, but um. Now I'm really looking forward to it. I was, re- I was I watched the full uh, Saints game on the Southampton game on um, Saturday and just like and, and I've spoken about him already. Salah, he's just he's at a different level, and yeah. if he could score his chances that he gets, he'd have nine thousand goals already. Serious amount of chances. It, it is daft. I mean, and it's not even. Do you know what I like about Salah as well? And it's in my column as well. So I don't want to talk too much about it, but he scored almost every type of goal now. Mm. He scored a long range daisy cutter against West Ham. He scored a mad header against Leicester. Curler against Southampton. That Arsenal goal is the funniest goal you'll ever see. <laughs> he just ran through and away he went. He's just on form. And last night was really important that Firmino and Manny got back scoring because they hadn't scored in a while. Manny scores Firmino gets 2 1 with a no look goal, which is a cheeky look. Yeah. Um, I saw a thing. Did you see that? <laughs> When you have to look back at your defence. Even when you're sure. scoring. Yeah, yeah, and that <laughs> sums it up perfectly. Like, it um, does, it really does. But after yeah no I'm, this this should be a cracking game and and both teams both teams can't afford to lose it like the way the table's sitting at the minute obviously Chelsea win it say Chelsea win it and well, I think United are playing Brighton and, and Man City will win because Man City win so if Chelsea yeah, Huddersfield aren't they yeah uh, I think so I have it down here actually hang on of the fixtures here Man City playing Huddersfield on Sunday yeah yeah so. It's really important for Chelsea to keep that title race going for themselves because I would still count Chelsea in the hunt for it <coughs> and I would have Spurs, Liverpool, Arsenal and Burnley at the minute all chasing for the Champions League. That's, that's just being sensible about the whole thing. Yeah. So Chelsea need the win. Liverpool need to get something back in gear. It has the makings of being a cracking game. Would you be happy with a draw? No. Because you're at home. I say it all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm going to say. Yeah. You, you, win, you win every game at home. I want to win. Every home game you try and win. A draw just... Unless you're playing PSG and you're down to seven men. Uh, <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Or yeah, something, yeah. something drastic's going on. You lose a man, you lose two men or whatever. Yeah. Or you come back. It depends on the game circumstances. That's exactly. what I was going to say. But, but, but before the game starts, no. A win every time at home has to be. Has to be minimum. Yeah. Would you take, you take a draw at Anfield? I would, but for those reasons you just said, you know, City don't... You can't be giving them any more space, like... Honestly, you, you can't. Um... What we were talking about Liverpool um, only conceding one at home. Mm-hmm. Have they played anyone say in the top six at home or uh, United? The Drew United was? and Arsenal. United and Arsenal. Yeah. Beat Arsenal. Drew. Beat United. Arsenal when Arsenal had a bad time, and we'll talk with them in a bit because I know Jake will be listening, um, eagerly making sure we talk about Arsenal or will we get it in the neck? Um, that Arsenal one had a great time. But now they're sort of playing a wee bit differently and it might be a different score. But yeah, we played Arsenal, played, played Southampton, obviously the Burnley result. I um, can't remember who the other team, I think, was it Huddersfield was one of them that came down the field? I think you're right. Um, 
So yeah, so decent results. Huddersfield are doing well. Huddersfield, they're 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 doing how a promoted team should do. I think a promoted teams come up and everyone thinks it's just go straight back down again. But they're gonna have a bit of a fight for a while anyway. Yeah. The people try and work them out and see what's going on. And I mean they're sitting tenth, so and Brighton's ninth, so they can both be chuffed. Yeah. What they're doing. Um. So yeah, it's been different, but like we have started to find a form. Salah's got nine goals now in the league, fourteen in total in eighteen games. And scoring for Egypt as well, he's just... It's serious, isn't it? There um, was a great stat, United fans will love this one. Um, <laughs> what is it? Uh, Salah has the same amount of career goals for Liverpool as Lingard does for United. 14. Mm-hmm. Lingard has played 81 more games than him. And There's a reason for that. Lingard is dirt. Lingard is dirt, but <laughs> there's United fans love. He, he must be like, uh, we need to get a United fan on this, but he must, that's a big shout out to Kev Hagen, there to get him on. Uh, <laughs> They're like rats, you know. He, he must be, um, he must be like their dirt kite, their Park T son. Um, I don't know who Chelsea's version of that, was it William? Mm, William's a bit more flair than that. A bit more, is it, but he's a workhorse, is it, is it Moses? Is Moses your new version of that? Is that Victor Moses? Different positions, but I know what you mean. Fergie always threw on Park Park Song was amazing. In big Park, games too. Yeah, you know, Park he always threw him on against Chelsea and I used to hate seeing him. He threw him on against AC Milan when you in the Champions League and it was the reason they got past him. AC Milan, he was absolutely outrageous. <clears throat> St. Pirlo's book, he just chased him around the whole game. Right. Stuck on him. Yeah, I think that's the game United won. <coughs> but I, we, it was one of those games anyway, I think it was that one that he came on and he was just amazing. Park Song was brilliant. Yeah. But, you, like, Lingard actually plays... Sorry to uh, labour this point, but he plays in the same position as Salah does, you know, at times. Mm-hmm. And a, lo- a lot of the... Um, I'm trying to highlight how how good a start Salah's had. Oh, because I- it is extraordinary. Mo- like, top goal scorer in the Premier League and he's not even a number nine. He's broke Robbie Fowler's record as well for goals in so many games. <laughs> like, our first many games it was. So. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is serious. He, li- like, he is literally God now. Yeah. So That's club legend status. I know you have to maintain it, but... Um, he's up there like on that level and as we just saying about Lingard he's probably started more as a solid player I know he's probably now turned into a bit of a workhorse because he does mm-hmm. work back and Ashley Young just probably does similar stuff on the other yeah. side um, but yeah fantastic start and great to watch he's, he, he, he's he's funny in. to watch yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's hilarious when he takes off he's hilarious and likeable he's one of those players that yeah. even though he was at Chelsea and it didn't work out for him. There's no animals. Um, there's none. No. And I actually like seeing him do well. Do well. Yeah. Not on Saturday, but no. uh, you know, in general, I like seeing him do well. Um, he's just one of those players, like Torres. <laughs> just is. We were talking about um, United there, and we should talk about United <laughs> and City at the same time because both these teams are sitting. Well, United only a point ahead of Chelsea. But both these teams are setting the pace <laughs> in the Premier League. Paul Pog was back. Uh-huh. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is back it was seen as like an, a great world event the yeah. both these have came back Pablo was very good against Newcastle he was um, Pogba I know he's been out injured for how long six weeks Tell him the guy yeah um, but he did have a great start um, he had before his injury didn't he have four goals and three assists and you know, seven in, games or in, something. Yeah, was, something like that in whatever game. And I think that was inclu- wasn't was just the league, that was including everything. And he was only, he was only starting to rev up mm-hmm. and he got his injury. Unfortunate for him and for United, but um, it seemed like he was starting to form a partnership with the unspoken in the money manage. Um, and he hadn't reached his full, I don't think he had reached his full what he can do yeah. because I know it was a friendly, but the friendly France against England, he was out of this world. I remember watching it and thinking, that's the Pogba that United... Oh, yeah, that was at the, uh, in Paris? He was fantastic. Yeah, he was very, very good that night. He, I chose what he can do, mm-hmm. and what he needs to be doing is playing in that position. I think Kante played with him that night, actually, which would help any man in centre midfield. Mm-hmm. But pushing on... Is clearly what he's better at. You know, it's so obvious to me to see that um, he can 
score and he can assist. As you saw, I think he'd be, he could be a, a absolute outrageous number ten. Yeah, it's it's really obvious to me that, but Is, you, Jose seems to keep keeping him back a little bit and he keeps the reins on him. I I don't know why. Um, and then I, he brings on Zlatan to play him in the number ten. I don't understand that. No, it's sometimes it's hard to understand what Mourinho's doing, but <laughs> he, you know, he's hanging in the league and he's won loads and he has won loads of trophies. <laughs> yes, and. You can't argue with it, um. But for Pogba, I suppose it's a, it's not about Pogba. It's about Man United. Like it's about you know, winning games and, and winning trophies, which he has already done. Yeah, won the Europa League last year, um. But for Pogba to develop, I think he needs to be playing further forward. Not develop, but just to see the, to full get the full potential, potential out of yeah. him. Um, I think he could happily play. Could probably play Matic and Herrera in there, and you know push Pogba on. Imagine you know Pogba up there close to Lukaku. He's, it's bound to be good. Yeah, with yeah. Martial and Rashford, I'm a, I'm a, a massive and like uh, that makes me ill to say it, Martial fan. I really really like Martial. I think he's so much potential in him. And everyone talks about Rashford because obviously he's English and English media love him. And he look he could be a really good player too. Yeah, but there's something about Anthony Martial. I just think there, there's a, a, a stunning footballer in there. that could just Unleash. Martial um, had a great season. Was it two seasons ago. Yeah, when he first time? arrived, and he yeah. was the big. He was the main fella at United, really, wasn't he? There's no Zlatan, there's no Pogba, there was no Lukaku. He was playing number nine, and he scored something like nineteen goals that yeah. season, and he was only nineteen. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, now obviously with Lukaku being there, Lukaku's had a good start. He had a good start. Um, he hadn't scored. He hadn't scored since uh, the last August, six games or something. August, I think. Yeah. End of August or September, it was one of those. Including Liverpool. Yeah. Including Chelsea. Yeah. Which is the question mark. And not even he only had about three touches in those games. <clears throat> yeah. Would you be worried now? This one, I've wrote this down to ask you. If you was La- or you, if you were Lukaku, would you be worried now? Is Latan's back? Um. Yeah. I think if I was Jose Mourinho and Ans Latan, he's obviously got through tonight. They were beat like, but he has got through tonight. A couple of minutes gets through again Saturday, and then as we said, as we I don't know if we said it when we came on the show or before we come on the show, the teams now have the Premier League teams now have ten games in thirty seven days. That's just league games. So he's gonna have a run. Once as Latan finds his feet, I think there's a if Lukaku is still mm. stuttering and still mm, going in there form, I think there's a spot there for Latan to go at the number nine. <coughs> two two young fellas beside him, Marshall and Rashford, and then Pogba behind them with mm. Herrera. A manage, that's quite frightening. Yeah, when you when you say it out loud like that, yeah. <laughs> and if they've da- do you know David Hayes has faced the most shots in the Premier League? He probably has and the most he saved, clean sheets, saved, he? saved the most <laughs> shots in the Premier League. He saved. I heard this on another podcast, and I'm stealing it from them. I can't remember who it was. Sorry, but I think it might have been Totally Football Show or a second captain's one. On. He has saved thirty eight shots. Edison's only saved sixteen, but yet. You know, he's as in shots Adam to save. I mean, yeah. I don't mean that Ederson's been a horse goalkeeper, right. but David De Gea has faced almost double the pressure at oh. goal. And look at their their defensive record. Yeah, it surprises me that that he's faced that many shots. You know, in comparison to Man City, because everyone and this is me having to go at United because it does sound like everyone everyone absolutely buzzes off this ma- the Man United thing because he ran across the pitch a couple of times and put tackles out wide mm-hmm. and because he's played a couple of really good balls and everyone's like oh he you know what he has made such a massive difference to Manchester United look how solid they are well um, he's actually have the best goalkeeper in the world probably behind that's pulling off saves yeah. maybe, maybe you you slip Mignolet in there for a laugh or you know or some whatever someone in there and see what happens then and see because I think it w- it's a wee bit mis- skewed that there United's record mm. and it's like it showed tonight again obviously against Basel that they're they're just not there just yet and that's why yeah. I think Man City will canter off yeah and and it also shows how strong Man City's defence has become mm. 16 shots at Addison is not a lot no um, I assume this is Premier League. Yeah, and like now, now obviously Stones is out, which is going to be a massive miss for him because he's playing well. You don't know what company's going to do, whether he's going to be able to stay fit or not. Other men is going to come in, and then Mangal is there. So you're thinking if they got one more injury here, it's going to be a laugh. Yeah. But they have this fella. I don't know if you've heard of him before, called Kevin De Bruyne. 
Uh, I'm not sure because I'm not sure he played at Chelsea too and was let go. It's not funny now that they, there, there's Lukaku's only eight goals. He's <laughs> played with Chelsea. Salah's on nine. He's played with Chelsea. What's what's the De Bruyne is on four, three in the league, uh, six assists in the league. Best player in the league. He has the best left foot and right foot teams in the league as well. He's the best player in the league, but you know. Would you say who if you had all the money in the world, who would you rather have, De Bruyne or Pogba? De Bruyne hands down. Yeah. Would you not? I yeah, and I think I think those two. I think we're coming could come into a period here where. The likes of ourselves, Liverpool and Chelsea are going to be like watching these two and sentiment feeling going, oh dear. Yeah. Like it's Lampard, Gerrard, and Scholes and Vieira. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think those two could end up at those echelons, um, in the Premier League year anyway. Yeah, and I, I think De Bruyne just at the minute, it's not really fair because uh, Pogba has been injured for so long. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. But. At the minute, he's absolutely flying. He there's nobody come close to him. I don't think in the league. I know we we just talked about Mo Salah and scoring his goals and all, but um, I, even I'm even though I'm going to name my firstborn son Mo, even I am happy enough to say Kevin De Bruyne. Like that goal, right on Saturday, I watched it twice today again. It's brilliant. Like it's it's, a, it's actually a brilliant thirty seconds of football because Harry Maguire waxed the post when Leicester are all on on top form. Yes, and then. The ball gets to De Bruyne, he springs it forward to Sane, Leroy Sane, who's playing amazing, yeah. cuts inside. It's De Bruyne's touch. He almost like, if you look at it again, he almost like freezes all the Leicester players. Yeah. His touch just, and they all just stop dead. Oh, bollocks. Yeah. Puts on his, his left hand side and <sighs> thump, thumps it into the top corner. He, he caresses the ball. <laughs> just, doesn't he? he? He's brilliant to watch. Yeah. And, He's so brilliant to watch that it's annoying to watch <laughs> City. You know, I don't watch City that often. Like, I only, you know, I see that City highlights are on and I it's want to watch, to watch it. It's hard to watch because you don't. Yeah. I want to watch it, but I don't want to watch yeah. it because then you see <coughs> how solid they are. You know, how last year they were at the back dodgy. And that's why, that's what cost them the yeah, league. Yeah, that's It cost them more than anything. Um, and that would have really annoyed Pep. And what he's done is he's strengthened the back line, but he has done what he does <laughs> up front. Like, and, you know, he's working with the same players, basically. More or less. You know, no, Bernardo Silva's in there. And Bernardo Silva, but he doesn't, he doesn't start, really. No, like, he, no. he doesn't usually start. Which is mad. Pep has worked with these players for, you know, a year and a half. And you can start to see it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's a bit ominous, isn't it? It is. That's what he, that's what he does with players, and De Bruyne is clearly feeling the full force of it. Yeah, him the most. Yeah. Because last year, you know, at this stage of the year, we were, we were talking about City. We probably talk about David Silva mm-hmm. more. De Bruyne, yes, started and was a good player, great player. Yeah. But he's taken over, you know, and Silva's probably getting on a wee bit older now, and De Bruyne is the main man. Silva's still glorious though, isn't he? He's still right? glorious, like, mm-hmm. yeah, and Aguero's glorious, and Sané's glorious, and Sterling. Jesus. What about Sterling? We don't have to talk about Sterling if you don't want to. What about Sterling? Because <laughs> you just rubbed him right on my face, and I just remembered about Raheem I, Sterling. I, I hate uh, watching Raheem Sterling because <coughs> um, I'm going to say something mad here, right? <clears throat> it's going to be mad now. Yeah? I would probably swap Coutinho and Sterling. What? Yeah, because I'll tell you why, simple reason why. Um, we've got Lalana. All right, so that would cover playmaking little abilities that Coutinho does. Might not cover the, the, the smashing the ball in from 30 yards, but we could deal with yeah. that. And I would have Sterling. Um, and as much as I love Firmino and for what he does, he wouldn't start if I had Sterling. And my front three would be Sterling, uh, Mane and Salah. <laughs> and I would just have the rest of the team would be the defenders. Yeah, And they'd just be. sit on the edge of the box and just let those three run up and down. Sterling's been... He is brilliant, and he, he couldn't form. finish for a wee while, and he has added that to his game now. And like, mm. I don't want to jinx them. Well, I don't mind if I jinx them or not actually, but England could have a serious threat with Rashford and Sterling and Kane. Yeah, going forward, and that talking about Kane actually now leads us on to Spurs and Arsenal. Yeah, we have nice talking about results, but we, we both know our teams won. <coughs> United won as well, and City won two 0 mm-hmm. Spurs and Arsenal stunned me when that when that result was being shown because in our football group. 
mm. I had text you and Jake to say 2-1 yeah. to Spurs. Spurs. And then looked at my phone and it was 2-0 to Arsenal and uh, some horror show was happening here for Spurs. That 17 games away from home now, Pochettino's gone to the top six. You know when he's won? One. One? One game. And I love Pochettino. You know I love Pochettino. Yeah, I've yeah. heard all these shows, you know I'm a big fan of Pochettino. And again, that was another fact I was thinking, what? I don't know, it's, it's baffling, isn't it? Hi. How? How's he getting away? How has that happened? I don't know how that's happened, but... And what? Spurs... Now, the, the first goal should have happened. It wasn't a foul. Then the player was offside. But as I can hear Jake and me already saying, but well, what about the Stoke goal? And and he's right. And that, it happens. It comes around. Swings around about Yeah, exactly. It really? comes around on that side. They got it. Um, but then Arsenal... Arsenal looked a far better team. Brilliant. Arsenal do this, don't they? Arsenal must be the most frustrating team to support. Uh, Liverpool's up there now. Liverpool are probably up there. <laughs> but And that's what I was thinking briefly about Chelsea earlier on. Is Chelsea have won things. I was thinking about Amanalo and as um, contentious as he was, yeah. Chelsea won things under him. and They were quite successful, yes. Yeah, not under him, but you know, while he was there. Yeah. Um, During his reign. Yeah. And <coughs> it's been great to support Chelsea over the last 10 years. Oh, I'm sure it has, yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. But Liverpool, as you say, and Arsenal must be so frustrating because Arsenal can play that way and they have the players to play that way. And Wenger, for some reason, sometimes plays the, not the best players. <laughs> but Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like I said, Ozil and Sanchez played against Spurs and they were brilliant. <laughs> like I said, wasn't even that good and he was brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, like the runs he was making, you could. Guy and Avil, I think, talking about it off camera, <coughs> he said his runs were fantastic and you could even see, then I started to focus in and as a centre forward myself, like. For the famous Simiris, yes, going ahead. Yes, not on the level of, like I said, let's say. No, you're but, better. Um, <laughs> You know, this runs timing and where he's going and how he went. Dar was all over the place, I think. But it was because of Lacazette, what he was doing. Um, his runs were fabulous. And when you have Ozil in that form, going forward, as well as Sanchez, they create so much. And I don't know why Wenger doesn't play them all the time. Well, I think this year, maybe because those two, <coughs> Ozil and Sanchez are potentially going Go to do one which would leave Arsenal in a massive hole it does leave Arsenal Ooh. Ozil, you would like, fear for them wouldn't you Ozil frustrates me because I watched him I watched him for Germany and you think well, he is outrageous he was brilliant wasn't and he? at Real Madrid brilliant when he first arrived at Arsenal quite good brilliant at times but this is the only, this is probably the only game this year where he's been outstanding Ozil has the ability never mind Christian Eriksen and Coutinho and but Ozil has the ability to take over a game completely on his own from mm-hmm. his position and he just doesn't do it enough and that would frustrate me no end being an Arsenal fan but and do you think this is this is another another Arsenal result where they've done it against Spurs or a big team and then they're going to get smacked in the face this Saturday with Burnley or Sunday I think it is maybe um, yeah I, I think do think beat, that I think they'll get beat by Burnley and we'll do our predictions at the end don't worry but yeah I I actually do think that, and it's nothing against Arsenal, but it's just the way they seem. That's the way their results seem to go. You cannot trust Arsenal, and Jack will probably tell you that himself. But, um, not, you know. It's usually against Chelsea. Arsenal were brilliant, (laughs) and then they went and lost, didn't they? Against somebody. I think so. Yeah. It was nil nil at Stamford Bridge, which is. A hard thing to achieve, like yeah, especially yeah. when you're Arsenal, like you usually don't do that. And <coughs> Chelsea had a brilliant record against Arsenal yeah. Stamford Bridge before that. Um <coughs> and I remember thinking after that game, <sighs> Arsenal Arsenal have got it now. Arsenal it looks clicked. solid, yeah. And then they went and got beat or they went and drew with a, a you know, a minnow or something. Um but what we're saying about Ozil there, he worked so hard defensively, I thought, as well. And it wasn't it was weird to see. It was weird to see. Uh, but it showed that he um, was capable of doing that. You know, I actually thought at times in the past, Ozil just runs out of steam. Yeah. You know, and he's le- not lazy, but 
he saves himself for yeah. for going forward. But I know he came off. He came off in the eighty something then, didn't he? But um, he worked so hard um, coming back, and it really made a difference. You could see Sanchez does it anyway, and on that other side, and uh, Lacazette worked very hard too. But you can see the difference in Ozil when he does that, and it must be so frustrating to watch him when he doesn't do it. Yeah. It's like... I think Jake would probably rather have Ozil in his team than Sanchez. I get the feeling when he was talking before, and he'll hopefully back on next week with yourself now, that's you tied in, um, that uh, Sanchez really really pissed Jake off the way he's been getting on. Yeah. Um, it's more, isn't it, isn't it more a, a personal thing? <laughs> yeah. Like, it would annoy me too what Sanchez yeah. does or what he... You know the way he straps. Yeah, but football wise, you want your best players on the pitch, mm. and if he goes to Man City, it'll be um that'll be so disheartening. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the worst. I hope he plays you as soon as he arrives. <laughs> but Ozil doesn't. Going back to Ozil, he doesn't usually do that against big teams, so that's why it was probably weird for us to see. He usually goes missing. Yeah. Yeah. He usually goes missing. Gets taken off. <laughs> and then has a storm in the next week or something, you yeah. know, and then the Arsenal fans love him again. Like there was a stat, what was it earlier on? I was looking at um since two thousand thirteen fourteen, he has created the most chances, he has the most success and created the the most big chances, so they're called, in the Premier League. Which is sounds <laughs> class, doesn't it? Like yeah. but Arsenal have won it. Arsenal have won the Premier League. No. And you know, they've come fourth. And they haven't done anything in the Champions League. Yeah. Um so it shows you that he's he's doing it but he's not doing it when it matters. Yeah. And some players just do that, but at at Real Madrid he seemed to do it when it matters. And for Germany in the in the World Cup. Yeah. He did it when He it does mattered. it for Germany. He does it for Germany like and why is that? Is it, is, the, is it Arsenal Wenger? Is it is it the mentality that at Arsenal has or? come in at Arsenal in the last? It, well, obviously, wasn't the mentality before under Arsenal Wenger because no. they won things, they won the Premier League, won Premier Leagues, went unbeaten, um, went unbeaten. That's a different team, isn't it? Like that's yeah. a different. You can there's a different vibe about it. Arsenal, all I've seen soft for the last and, and that's why number I, of years. I think um, on Saturday on Saturday <coughs> uh, they're up against Burnley. Mm. And I think is it Sunday or is it uh, Saturday? <coughs> it's Sunday at two. I th- I think Burnley will beat Arsenal at Burnley. <coughs> yeah. Uh, that, see Jack it wouldn't surprise goal. me. I actually, didn't. I know you were talking about Bur- Burnley. Burnley have scored two re- cracking goals. See, the, the Everton mm-hmm. goal was like twenty five passes. Yeah. And then the goal, Jack Cork's goal, uh, against Swansea on Saturday, is about eight or nine passes, and then the balls crossed into the box. But it's balls all it's, it's Fizzed across the ground, yeah. and then it's fired into the air. And the Jack Cork, he's made a massive difference to Burnley. Jack Cork's very underrated footballer, in my opinion. I, I like Jack Cork, and he heads it home. Burnley, um, this time know. last year, right, they were twelfth and then fifteen points, and their record was one four, uh, drew two, lost six. This year, their record is one six, drawn four, lost two. Same as Liverpool, same points as Liverpool. Same points as Liverpool. Same points as Arsenal. Same points as Arsenal. Hmm. Same points as Arsenal is is you would never have called that like or Liverpool. Yeah, it's um, Sean Dyke, and you'll know I'm a big fan of his. He mm. has done such a job with them. Last year they did what they had to do, stayed in the league, yeah. and he has completely changed the football and the way they play now, and the way they fire the ball about and they go after teams now. Where they don't just sit back and not, even when they go away from home, they go after teams. You know, fine rightly what it's like. Yeah, from they're, the word go, it's not they're trying price. things set pieces which usually would just been humping in. They're trying different things, and Sean Dykes trucking along nicely. And I'm glad he hasn't. I've probably jinxed it, bowed in and gone to another club. I'd like to see him felt see the season out with, with Burnley. But I I can see two one the Burnley on Sunday. I can as well. I I can see. I can say one 0 to Burnley. I can say you know Arsenal not scoring. They they, they've. Tchaikovsky and Ben May have been brilliant. <coughs> they've they've all been brilliant, haven't they? Yeah. They, They're not going to reach Le- Leicester's levels. No, I think because they don't have the Vardy, they don't have the Mares, they don't have the Kante. 
Do you know hard I mean? to beat. They, they're, but they're doing the they're, they're doing the mole like Leicester did. They're making themselves really, really hard to beat. And they're talking like the way Leicester did. Get to the forty points mark, and then we'll see how we go on from there. Everyone's saying it, so, but they just don't have the players that Leicester had. You wouldn't like at the start of the season. Success for Burnley. I would you would have said you know, a real good season will be top half. Yeah. Like a real that's a really good season. Yeah. Um, and they're sitting level on points with Arsenal and Liverpool. Level on points with Arsenal and Liverpool, and that leaves them only what is it? A point behind Spurs. They're a point off top four. It's amazing, isn't it? It's stunning, like Sean Dyke, brilliant. Um, we'll get into our predictions to finish off. We'll just well, we don't need to go through the, the results. You all know the results in the Premier League the weekend anyway. And this is the sport file. We just line up and have a chat and have some notes down. Um, West Ham. Are playing Leicester on Friday night. I think I'll avoid this one, but I'll check on the score obviously for next week's show. Um, what's your predictions for that? Well, West Ham are beat, weren't they? Because um, they're always beat. Yeah, David Moyes is big. I'm actually going to say I'm going to leave it in my column <laughs> for a Friday, but um, I, I can't, I can't see West Ham getting anything out of it. I think Leicester beat them. I don't think. It's not Puyol's a good manager, and he's doing well at Leicester. Like. Yeah, and it's sort of they're both they're both just floating. At, well, West Ham aren't West Ham are in trouble. Like they're yeah. second. Yeah. Leicester are are just floating. Where are they? He steadied the ship, or? and I think he has um. Twelve. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um. They're a good bit off the top seven, like, but. Yeah. There's there's a lot of teams are it really has split differently yeah. to what yeah. you would have would have thought. It, go, it goes twenty two and then it goes to eighteen points for Watford and then it goes like another five down to the next one. Aye. So Watford hanging in there like. But <coughs> yeah, but no, I, I can't see West Ham getting anything out of it. No, I I'm, I'm going for a, like a two three nil win, Leicester win. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, go uh, to give an exact prediction. I'll go two nil Leicester. Yeah. Two nil Leicester. Um, Crystal Palace. V Stoke, a Tony Pulis derby. We didn't even get to talk about him this week. He's he's gone. Yeah, he's gone, and there's a potential for a lot of other people to go. I just had it, it, it written down. Moyes is one of them. Like <laughs> if Moyes goes this weekend, I'm going out. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Moyes and Hodgson go on the same weekend. Sarah, <clears throat> your sister and my fiance will not see me for weeks. <laughs> I'm telling you, if them two get sacked on the same weekend, I'm off. Gone and anyone I'm work listening to, I'm gone for weeks. But it's funny, isn't it? Managers like Moyes is now, you know, West Ham savior, and like why? Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he, 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 in no eyes of any West Ham fan, was he their savior? He's, I, I, I don't know. This is for another show where we can talk about it. I don't know how these managers keep it. Padre's been linked now to the West Brom job. For me, I sound like Jay Armstrong there before Eddie gets in. He always says that. Um. Michael O'Neill should be given the West Brom job. I let's see what he, yeah, let's see what he's like and give him a go. And I know like I, I want one there to do well and it'll be sad when he goes, but let's let him see and go and do that. But and <laughs> Palace and Stoke, who are we going for? Um I think I'm gonna go Palace. Nope. I'm going Stoke. I'm gonna go three two Palace. Okay, that's fair enough. Pass at home. Pass at home, yeah. Yeah, three two pass. I'm going to go uh, 1 0 Stoke win. That pa- is completely different. <laughs> pa- pa- Peter Crouch. <laughs> the best uh, header ever. Yeah. Um, best assist, better than Paul's goals. Uh, the, the Devils team <coughs> are playing Brighton at Hove Albion. Manchester United against Brighton. See it in United. See, I know United fans come on here yet, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> until uh, they do. Until they do. Uh, Man- Manchester United play Brighton at home I'll be in at home United at home mm-hmm. it's a, it, well this is going to score Latin, four aren't they Latin's going to score they're going to score four yeah at least they have to score four yeah. four one okay I, I'm going to go four nil okay. uh, Newcastle are playing Watford at Newcastle but obviously Marco Silva and Watford are doing bits again another manager that you know could move but for a different reason I hope he stays I hope he stays and I hope he he does not go to Everton. Yes. Um. But yes, Sorry, for Kieran. another show. Um. Yeah, Watford three one. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go one all. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, oof, Swansea at Bournemouth and Callum Wilson's back scoring goals is brilliant. brilliant. But if there's bad injury, brilliant to see. Like I like him, like like <coughs> like the cut of his jib. <coughs> yeah. Um, um, and Tommy Abraham injured for Swansea, is he? It, it wouldn't matter. Swansea are guff. Yeah, but uh, don't like Tommy Abraham. Oh, uh, sorry, very sorry. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Could make a difference. <laughs> uh, t- uh, two 0 Bournemouth, yeah. and then Clement loses his job. Ooh, um, you can't say. And, and I like him too, but. You can't see anything else but a Bournemouth win 2 1. Tottenham Hotspur are playing uh, Michael O'Neill and, w- and Wadings West Bromwich Albion at Wembley. Gary Megson's at the minute, isn't it? Is it? That's, it that's is. horrific if it is. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, Spurs will go to town on them. Yeah. I and can see five. Oh, big. I, I'll, I'll go five then. Yeah. Yeah. Five, 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 five nil. nil, five nil, yeah. Five nil, yeah. West Brom can't score. No. Um, Liverpool against Chelsea. <coughs> I thought about this one a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Um, you have sleepless nights after. <coughs> and I tried my best not to be fast, but yeah, you be whatever you want. No, it's no, no I, you know, to be just to look at it from as if I was a neutral. No, I never ever look at anything <laughs> as I'm neutral. So go on ahead. I, 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 I can say Chelsea won. Like I. I Think that That's the first time you ever drank. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chelsea um, are too well balanced, and Liverpool aren't quite balanced enough. We're just mad forward. Yeah. Um, if we were a ship, we'd have sunk head first. Big time. Like <laughs> it, the defense is too penetrable. If that is even a word, yeah. but too late. Yeah, Murata in the air. In the head. Um, <laughs> from set pieces, Liverpool are a disaster, and Chelsea are very good in the air, especially Murata, you saw it against United. Um, if anything like that happens, you can go short defeat, Hazard can come in behind. I think they're going to have a bit too much. Liverpool will score, I think, mm-hmm. um, because they're just so good going forward, but I think Chelsea will be tight enough to keep them 3-1, I think. Oh, and I, I'm going to go um, I'm gonna go 2-0 Liverpool. <laughs> Okay. Um, I know Liverpool I know. aren't going to concede. I, I, yeah, one goal at home all year. I, it's just Klopp, Klopp just loves these games. Um, I wish he would love uh, game management and getting his team to uh, see a game out. That's a, that's a different topic. But yeah, I, I'm going to go two 0 And I have been thinking about this, and I just think like last year when we went to Stamford Bridge and now finished two one. But I think Liverpool will be something similar and come out of the block, and I think it'll be. 2-0 and I would absolutely love it if Dominic Solanke came on and scored I'm sure you would and I'm <laughs> sure you would love it if Mo Salah scored as well if those two score that's a good day yeah. um, Sunday's games to finish off to happen or at Ever- or at home to Everton oh, it's one to avoid that is really how is that is that a Super Sunday hope, game uh, there's no such thing as a Super Sunday anymore I hope Steve Davis scores I'm sorry Kieran um, but I hope to happen when about 3 or 4-0 yeah, but, but I don't, think don't they score won't. either. You no, know? no, no. no. The Shane Long hasn't scored in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Last time he scored was playing hurling. It's it's annoying, isn't it? Like, uh, but as you know, well as an Irish man, like yeah. and as it's frustrating because like you know at times he can be he can be devastating. So like, good. Even. Like I remember, like the two, Germany goal. Yeah, the Germany goal, but you know, even I'm thinking back to a specific goal when Mane still played for Southampton and <coughs> um, Long and him um, tore Chelsea apart um, at at Southampton one year. It was two, three years, three mm. years ago, it must have been. Um, and he was on fire at that stage. Yeah. You know, he's so good in the air as well yeah. for a small man. And um, he just seems to have lost it at the minute. Southampton seemed to have. They're just a uh, myth. Poor, team, aren't boring, they? aren't they? Very, very, very dull and boring. That's why when you read out that out, I was like, oh, I do not want to watch that game. No. Um, nil, nil. I can see that. Nil, nil. Yeah, I, I'm going to go draw and just because um, I'm just going to one all. Yeah. There'll be two on goals. <laughs> just to be different. Just to be different. Um, Burnley, as we said, Arsenal, I said 2-1 Burnley and you said 1-0 Burnley. Sticking with that. Uh, did I not say who won? You said one then. Oh yeah. I I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think Burnley. Um, I think Burnley beat them. Sorry, Jack. I'm not sorry. 
Um, Huddersfield are at home the final game of the weekend before we midweek match as well next week as well which we're not going to get into tonight excellent um, Huddersfield against Man City I mean as much that'll as that'll be such a good day down in Huddersfield they'll be welcoming in the league leaders one of the best teams in Europe <clears> and then they'll get thumped 4-0 yeah as Four much as he would love it to be different it's not yeah, going to be yeah it's not going to be um, but I'll say anyway no, I'm just going um, Four one Man City. Four one Man City. Um, that'll do us for this week. Thanks for coming on, Brent. No problem. Enjoy. Um, uh, yeah, that's you in now, and the rules is now you, you can't leave. So um, that's us on the Sports Babble Football Show. Plenty more to come up this week on the Sports Babble. We're still on our competition, which is on Facebook, for you to win more or less a year's free haircuts with my wee mate and our mate Sean Lawler at the Cambridge Barber Shop. Um. So go ahead on over and check that out. All you have to do is like our page, like the post, and uh, like Sean's page. And share the post as well. I think the thing is, I'm very tired, so I'm forgetting. But go on over and you see it. So the, the Babel screen show is up today, which was Wednesday. This will be out tomorrow, Thursday. Um, Mark Beatty's on another piece um, on NFL for us. And I've got a column coming up on Friday. And there'll be a few more bits coming up. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, as always, like share and subscribe at the sports babble and uh, on facebook and twitter and thanks for listening cheers brent <laughs>